The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Testing. I think you're up, Mike. Okay. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending our Making Custom Optical Properties in TracePro. Today's presenter is Dave Jacobson. He's our senior application engineer, and I'll be your moderator. I'm Mike Govin. I'm the vice president of sales and marketing. Dave, please take it away and show us more about custom property making in TracePro. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, good day to everyone, and thank you for attending our webinar. Uh, the format for today's webinar is going to be a 25 to 30 minute presentation. Uh, it might go a little bit longer than that, and then we'll follow that up with a question and answer session. Uh, at any point during the webinar, uh, please feel free to submit questions using the question box in the GoToWebinar control panel. And we'll address all questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, and I'll try to remind you as we're going along about the questions. Before we get started, uh, just some additional resources in TracePro. Uh, all of our past TracePro webinars are archived on our website. And here's the link. We also have tutorial videos, um, more standard tutorials that you can print out and follow along. And you can also find uh, information on our upcoming training classes. Uh, specifically related to that upcoming training classes, uh, we have three events scheduled here in the near future. Uh, we're doing a one-day TracePro seminar in Tel Aviv, Israel on October 16th. We have four days of TracePro training here at our headquarters in Littleton. Uh, we're doing two days of an introduction to TracePro on October 24th and 25th. And then we're doing two days of optimization with TracePro on October 26th and 27th. Uh, then we are also having four days of training in Barcelona, Spain. Uh, November 7th and 8th will be an introduction to TracePro and November 9th and 10th will be optimization with TracePro. Uh, we also offer custom on-site training. So if anybody's interested in any of these training classes or on-site training classes, uh, please feel free to contact us here at any time and we'll be happy to discuss that with you. A uh, little bit more information. Uh, the current release of TracePro is TracePro 781, released on May 3rd. We do have uh, TracePro 782 Early Access available. Uh, that's available to anyone that has a current maintenance and support agreement. And then Raviz 781 was released uh, at the same time as TracePro 781, May of 2017. And customers with current maintenance and support agreements can download these new releases uh, from our website. I should note as well that we are recording this webinar and we will make the recording available along with the slides on our website uh, probably within the next day or so. So if you want to go back and re, uh, review any of the information we talk about, uh, it'll be on our website. Okay, so let's get to the topic of today's webinar, and that's making custom optical properties in TracePro. Our agenda today is we'll start out, uh, we'll talk about what property types are available in TracePro. Uh, then we'll do a quick look at what properties are available in each edition of TracePro. Uh, we'll go through the parameters that you use to define the different property types. We will talk about the property editors and we'll walk through an example of making a new property. Uh, then we'll, we'll wrap up with uh, the utilities in TracePro, tro, excuse me, the utilities in TracePro that are useful for making new properties. And then finally the question and answer session at the end. And again, please feel free at any time to, to submit questions using the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Let's talk about the property types in TracePro. And first up, we'll look at the property types that are applied to objects. And these are material, bulk scattering, fluorescence, gradient index, Mueller matrix for polarization, uh, ray trace flag, important sampling for bulk scattering, then temperature and color. 
Now, during the webinar today, we're not going to be able to go to, through all of these uh, in depth, just due to time constraints. Um, I'm going to try to focus on the ones that are in red here on this slide, and then you'll see in the next slide as well. And these ones that are in red have dedicated property editors, meaning we have a special editing uh, window for making these properties. Uh, one quick note here is a lot of times I get asked, what is this ray trace flag property? Uh, the ray trace flag is the green check mark or red X that's next to an object or a source in your trace pro model. And it's actually a property that can be applied and we can turn it on and off. And you can even use macro commands to do that. So if you ever see ray trace flag, just note it's the green check mark or the red X that's next to an object or a source. In addition to properties that are applied to objects, we also have properties that we can apply to uh, surfaces. And these are surface property, reptile, color, important sampling for surface scattering, surface source, and diffraction, exit surfaces, diffraction, the surface source property, temperature, and temperature distribution. And again, the ones highlighted in red have dedicated property editors. And those are the ones we're going to try to focus on here. Now, all of the properties in TracePro are stored in the TracePro property database. Uh, the database is typically located at C colon backslash users, your username, app data, roaming, Lambda Research Corporation, TracePro slash TracePro.db. Um, so you don't have to remember all that. You can actually find the location right in TracePro itself. Just go to the View menu, then select Options, and then General, and it'll show you the location of your TracePro database. Uh, a couple useful um, commands or selections here for working with properties in TracePro. One is Tools Database Export. So this is in the Tools menu, and then go to Database, and then Export. And this allows you to save the current model properties as a text file. And you can then send these properties to a, one of your colleagues, or if you have to send something to our support team here. And likewise, Tools Database Import allows you to import properties into, the tra into your TracePro database. So if somebody sends you a new property, then you can easily add it by just going Tools Database Import. Now, each edition of TracePro has different property types available. Starting out with TracePro LC, we have surface property, material, surface source, color, exit surface, and ray trace flag. Stepping up to TracePro standard, in addition to those properties, adds in bulk scatter, diffraction, gradient index, important sampling, Mueller matrix, temperature, class and user data, prescription, and thin film stack. And then stepping up one more time to TracePro Expert, includes all of those previous properties, plus uh, fluorescence, reptile, and temperature distribution. So as you can see, each version of TracePro, as you go up the line, adds uh, new and additional property types. Let's take a look now at the parameters that define some of these property types. Now, I will say, as I mentioned, you know, just due to time constraints, we, we're not going to be able to cover everything about every property. You know, I'll try to give you a good overview here. But for complete information on all of these TracePro property parameters and for defining and applying properties, uh, please see Chapter 3 on the TracePro user manual. And you can find the manual directly in TracePro by going to Help and then TracePro User Manual. So each property type has its own set of unique parameters that are used to define the property. Uh, in many cases, these parameters can then vary as a function of other values, such as temperature, wavelength, incident angle, or azimuth angle if it's a, if it's a asymmetric type property 
for example, here's a, a diffuser. In this case, it's the Brightview diffuser. And we see the scattering, the BTDF, transmitted scattering, is varying as a function of incident angle. And we'll talk more about that as we're going along. Okay, we'll start off with a material property. And in a material property, the parameters that you would be defining are index of refraction. And when you do index of refraction, there's two options. Either is a table where you can list out each individual wavelength and then the index of refraction for that wavelength. Uh, when you do that, TracePro will then interpolate. It will do a linear interpolation between the wavelengths to calculate the index for any wavelength that falls in between that range. Uh, should note that it will not extrapolate, so it will not give you values for index of refraction above or below the highest or lowest wavelength you have defined in the table. It'll use that highest or lowest value for anything there. Uh, you can also define an interpolation formula. And the formulas we have available at this point, shot, Selmeyer, extended shot, Hertzberger, Conradi, Selmeyer 2, Selmeyer 3, Selmeyer 4, Handbook 1, Handbook 2, and Hikari. And again, looking in the Trace Pro user manual will give you more information on each of these um, formulas. And when you choose an interpolation formula, what you wind up then entering is the coefficients for that formula into the property editor. And then it will calculate the index of refraction based on the wavelengths you're using in the TracePro model. Uh, for material properties, you can also define bulk absorption. This is the absorption inside of the material. And you can choose either an absorption coefficient defined by the Beer-Lambert law or an extinction coefficient. You can also add a minimum and maximum wavelength select if it's isotropic or uniaxial, is it a birefringent material? And then lastly, choose if you want to have the index and the bulk absorption vary as a function of temperature. On a surface property, we're defining some different items. For one, we'll start off with absorption, then specular reflection, specular transmission, uh, BRDF, which is the bidirectional reflectance distribution function, or it's reflected scatter. Uh, BTDF, the bidirectional transmittance distribution function for transmitted scatter. Uh, you can choose are the BF and D, BTD, BRDF and BTDF, uh, are they isotropic or asymmetric for the scattering? And then also the surface property, the parameters can vary as a function of temperature. If you only enter one temperature for any of these properties uh, in the property editor, then what's going to happen is the property will have the same uh, behavior at all temperatures. Uh, the option for the, the scatter models for BRDF, BTDF are, are ABG, uh, elliptical ABG, elliptical Gaussian, table BSDF, asymmetric table BSDF, 1D ABG, one-dimensional table, or use BSDF properties. Uh, with TracePro LC, the only scatter model available is the ABG model. Um, for all of the other scatter, all of the other scatter models are available in both TracePro Standard and Expert. Uh, surface source property is used for turning any surface in the model into a light emitting surface. And when we define that, We'll define the spectral type. Is it rectangular, Gaussian, solar, or table? You can define the angular type, Lambertian, Gaussian, uniform, solar, or table. You can select the emission. Is it watts per meter squared? So radiometric, um, yeah, sorry, uh, radiometric irradiance. Is it watts? Is it lux? Or is it lumens? And you can also have this vary as a function of temperature. Uh, if you select the table option for both spectral and angular distribution types, it gives you complete control of the emission as a function of wavelength, 
polar angle, azimuth angle, and temperature. So it gives you the most generality by choosing the table options. The bulk scatter property, first you choose the scatter model that you want to use, and we have three options available, uh, Henny Greenstein, Gegenbauer, or User Defined. And User Defined would involve writing a DLL, a dynamic linked library, to define the scatter. And in most cases, the, the two terms you're defining, the two parameters, are the anisotropy, or G, which is the likely direction of scatter. If G is zero, it's isometric, I mean isotropic scatter. If G is less than zero, it's likely to be backward scatter. And if G is greater than zero, it's forward scatter. And then you also define uh, the scatter coefficient, which is the inverse of the mean free path. So how far is a ray likely to travel before it's, before it's scattered? Uh, there's also an additional parameter called alpha that's used in the Gegenbauer model to help control the shape of the scatter curve. For, for a fluorescence property, what we have is we're defining relative absorption versus wave excitation wavelength, relative extinction versus excitation wavelength. Uh, in many cases, those two are the same. And then you're also defining relative emission versus emission wavelength, and then temperature. We also have a gradient index property. And with the gradient index, what you do is you select your gradient index model type, axial radial, axial elliptical, axial sinusoidal radial, axial tapered radial, cell foc, Woodlands, Spherical, Fisheye, Lunenberg, Gradium, Buchdahl, or Gradium, Selmeyer. And then you also get, uh, you define the coefficients for each of those selected gradient index models. We also have the reptile property. This is in Trace Pro Expert. Um, what you can do here now is you're defining the variation type, geometry, tile type, uh, whether it's a bump or hole, uh, what are the tile parameters, and then the geometry type for each of those parameters. Or the, sorry, the, the parameters for each of the geometry type. And the parameters for the geometry type are going to vary depending on what type of geometry you selected, whether it's a sphere or a prism, enhanced prism, DMD. Uh, we do have a webinar on uh, Reptile and the Texture Optimizer 2, and you can find a link to that here. And as I mentioned, we are going to have uh, these slides available on our website uh, within the next day or so. So you'll be able to come to here and get to these links and find all this information. There's also a thin film stack property where you define a material and a thickness. And then the thin film stack is referenced by a surface property and it's used to model a thin film coating applied to a surface. And this material option here lets you pick any material in the TracePro database. Uh, for example, there's a catalog for materials for coatings and you can then go in and things like mag fluoride, silicon monoxide, other different coating materials. Uh, let's talk now a little bit about some of the property editors that are available in TracePro. And the defined or the property editors that we have, these are the properties that have their own dedicated uh, editor, material, surface, surface source, bulk scattering, fluorescence, gradient index, reptile, and thin film stack. And as I mentioned, each of these properties has a dedicated property editor to define their parameters. Uh, other properties such as temperature, Mueller matrix, and important sampling have their parameters defined in the apply properties dialog box. So you, you set up the properties when you actually apply that property. 
You can find the property editors in Trace Pro by going to define, edit property data. And then the editors that you have available are going to depend on the edition of Trace Pro you're using. Uh, this is Trace Pro Expert, so it's going to show all of the properties. Here's the surface property editor. Uh, we can see temperature, wavelength, incident angle, absorption, specular reflection, specular transmission, BRDF, BTDF. Uh, I'll walk through an example of a surface property and how to make one here in a few minutes. The material property editor. In this case, this is showing shot BK7. It's using the Selmeyer formula. And here is the formula and then the coefficients for that formula. And what TracePro will do is we'll calculate the index for any wavelength that you're running a ray trace. And we can see here we have this set up a minimum wavelength of 0.3 and a maximum wavelength of 2.3254 microns. So if we try to use BK7 outside of this range, TracePro will pop up a message saying we're working outside of its defined range. For surface source property, we're defining the spectral type, the angular type, and this is table, table, the emission, and then here's the value. It's the emission as a function of temperature, wavelength, polar, and azimuth angles. We also have the bulk scatter property editor. In this case, we, we're looking here. This is the Henry Greenstein model. Here's the formula. And this is actually for human whole blood. And we have wavelength, anisotropy, and scatter coefficient. So in this case, scattering is varying as a function of wavelength. For the fluorescence property, we're showing the excitation wavelengths and then the relative absorption, relative excitation. Uh, when you're in the editor, you can then click the emission tab here, enter the information for um, relative emission as a function of emission wavelengths. Gradient index property. This is a CELFOC SLC 180. Here's the formula being used here. And here's the parameters as a function of wavelength for this formula. Reptile has its own property editor as well. You can see things like the tile parameters, the variation type, the geometry type, the tile type, whether it's a bump or hole. And in this case for a sphere, we have radius and depth or height. And I think this is the last, yep. The last property editor here is the thin film stack. And in this case we're seeing we're defining the material. We're starting off, here's our substrate, here's our incident media. And then we have aluminum oxide, zirconium oxide, mag fluoride, along with the thickness of each layer in microns. Okay, now that we've talked a little bit about the properties and the editors, let's walk through making a sample property. And the general steps are going to be to open the relevant property editor. Uh, if you want to add a new catalog, click Add Catalog and type in the name of it. Then click Add Property. Uh, give the property a name. Uh, choose the options for the property if necessary. For example, if it's a surface property, what's the scatter model? Uh, enter the required data. And then click the disk icon to save the property. So let's say we want to define a new surface property. So we're going to open the surface property editor by going to define, edit property data, surface properties. That will open the surface property editor. And in this case, I'm going to click add catalog and I'm going to name the new catalog July webinar. I like to keep all my properties added, you know, organized in different catalogs, uh, but you know everybody has their own methodology how they like to organize things. 
So once I enter the name, I click OK. Now I can see here's my new catalog. To add the property or add a new property, I'm going to click Add Property and give it a name. And since we're working with a surface property, I want to select the scatter model. In this case, I'm going to choose ABG. And I'm going to leave the temperature and wavelength at their default values and then click OK. So this will now add, or in the uh, surface property editor, we'll have a single line in the spreadsheet here. It'll be set by default that the absorption is 100% or 1. Um, one thing to note in surface property is absorption plus specular reflection plus specular transmission plus integrated BRDF plus integrated BTDF add up to 1. And I'll show you how we can make sure of that here in a few minutes. So first step, we're going to enter some initial parameters. And for this property, and this is an arbitrary property, um, it's not based on measured data or anything, but I'm saying it has an absorption of 0.1, so 10%, specular reflection of 0.15, and specular transmission of 0.05. And I can just type those in. And then here on the left side of the, the, the window, we have a drop down menu for solve for. This allows us to solve for any of the other parameters. So, for example, in this one, I want to put all of the other flux or light as BRDF. So I can choose solve for, then select BRDF and it'll automatically fill that in, in that value. Uh, the other advantage of doing this is it conserves energy. So this makes sure that these values all add up to one. If I had ABG values, if this was based on a measured scatter measurement, I could enter those ABG values here as well. If you want to add additional uh, points or additional lines to the spreadsheet, for example, I want to have more wavelengths here. In the data points section, I can click Add, and that'll open up this Add Data dialog box. I can choose Wavelength, and then I can type in a value, whatever wavelength I want, and click Apply. Uh, one word of advice is I always forget to click temp uh, Wavelength, leave it at Temperature, and type in my values, and then have to go back and delete them. So if you're adding wavelengths, just note, click wavelength. Uh, likewise, if you want to delete a line, if you made a mistake, like I was just talking about, you can again, in data points, choose delete, and then select the parameters you want to delete. And lastly, once you have saved, or once you've entered all your data, click the disk icon up here on the toolbar, to save the property. If there's any mistakes, for example, the property doesn't conserve energy, you'll get a message here when you try to save it uh, telling you that. If you want to go back at any point and edit a property, say for example I have this property that I just made, I want to add some more information or change it, what I need to do is I need to click the unlock button here to be able to edit it. Right now, where the lock is closed, I wouldn't be able to change these values. But if I click there, it unlocks and I can edit the values. You can also import and export properties right here from the editors. We have an import property and an export property icon here. So you can save these out to, transfer, to send to one of your colleagues, or if somebody sends you some information, you can add it in here. Now, the properties in TracePro are text files. And this means we, we can create and modify them in a text editor, Excel, or a similar program. So here's that property, this one right here. I did the export property and then opened it in Excel. And here's all the parameters. 
And sometimes this is a good thing to do if you have a lot of data. If you had a transmission scan done for a an excitation filter or you know a bandpass filter, you might have a table of values. You know, it might be a couple hundred data points, and the, typing them in one by one in TracePro can get to be you know a, a long process. So what I usually recommend then is start you know make the initial property here in TracePro, add a few data points, export the property open it up in Excel, and then just cut and paste the values into this spreadsheet, save it as a text file, and then come back here and re-import it. Uh, one quick note is that stock properties cannot be edited or modified. Uh, if you want, and stock properties are the, the properties that are saved in TracePro, the default properties that are part of your catalog. Uh, if you want to modify one of these stock or default properties, uh, make a copy of it. There's a copy property button right here. So make a copy of it, and then you can edit the, pro edit the copy. Okay, so sort of our last section here. Uh, just a reminder, I see we already have a couple questions, but please feel free if people have questions, uh, add them at any point. But let's talk about some of the utilities from making new properties in TracePro. And we do have several uh, properties available, or several utilities available that can make it easy to add new properties. And you can find these in the Define menu and then Generate Property Data. So the first one is the BSDF Converter Utility. This allows you to take measured BSDF data uh, bidirectional scatter distribution function, and it can be either BRDF, reflected scatter, or BTDF, transmitted scatter. We can read the data into this utility, and then we can make, for example, this is making an ABG property based on those, those measurements. Uh, you can also do tabular uh, BSDF as well from here. So this allows you to take measured data and then make surface properties with the scatter measurements uh, that you can use in TracePro. Uh, next up is the surface source property utility. And what the surface source property utility lets you do is use the graphs you find in a typical LED data sheet. Uh, and it's not limited to LEDs, it could really be any light source. And then use those graphs to make a new surface source property. And what you do is you cut and paste. For example, here's the spectrum. This one I think is an Osram LED. You cut and paste the spectrum into this window. And then you click along the curve to define the, the, the spectrum. You repeat the process for the angular distribution. Uh, in this case, this is showing half rectangular, half polar on this plot. And I'm using the rectangular example. Uh, so we would do that. Uh, if it's an asymmetric output, we can define additional um, uh, azimuth angles and add in additional curves. So we, we're not limited to just symmetric types of distributions. And then when you're finished, you export it out, you know, define the number of lumens or uh, lumens or lux or irradiance or, or flux values. And anybody that's interested in this, we do have a tutorial video on our website, and it's in the support section. Uh, one quick note on that. Uh, since we recorded that video, the location of this utility is moved from the utilities menu to the uh, define generate property data menu. We also have a fluorescence property utility that works very similar to that surface source property utility. You can use graphs for the excitation, emission, and absorption, and you can cut and paste those in here and then click along the curves to digitize or define in those, those values. Uh, this also has the option for adding in a spectrum, so a source or a pump spectrum, so you can see the results and you can change the, uh, the mixture if you're defining, if you're designing, say, a white LED or a phosphor type system, and you can see the resulting color 
um, based on changing that property. We also have a, a DMD texture utility. Uh, DMD is the Texas Instruments Digital Micro Mirror Device. It's used in a lot of projector systems. And this DMD um, texture utility allows you to take a bitmap image or JPEG and it'll set the mirrors on the DMD device to produce that image. And this uses uh, the reptile property in TracePro. So this is a, a TracePro expert feature here, uh, as is fluorescence. And then uh, lastly, a bit of a preview, we have a new surface property utility that's available uh, in the seven, uh, TracePro 782 early access version. And this is a new surface property utility that works similar to the BSDF converter I mentioned earlier. But in this case, what it lets you do is some additional uh, capabilities, such as making composite uh, curves. So in this case, this first part of the curve here is one ABG model. The second part of this scatter curve is a, a different ABG model. So it gives you some additional flexibilities and capabilities for uh, modeling uh, sort of um, scatter curves that can't be done as a typical ABG model. So let me just uh, wrap this up here. So with hopefully what we've been able to show you today is that TracePro allows you to define new custom optical properties at any time. Uh, it's an open property database, meaning that you can add new properties at any point. Uh, adding new properties is straightforward and easy. Uh, there's a wide variety of parameters available to help you accurately model each property type. Uh, properties can easily be shared between users. And then we have utilities available within TracePro to help with defining some of the property types. Uh, for anybody that wants more information, or we do offer free 30-day trials of TracePro, uh, please visit us at www.lambdares.com or call us or send us an email at those numbers and email address below there. And we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, so with that, I'll put out uh, the call for questions again. Uh, we do have a few questions here on the table to start with. Um, and I think we can bring Mike back in as well. Yes, Dave, thank you for that uh, illuminating uh, presentation on the custom properties. We do have a few questions. Okay. Um, the first one is from, uh, from uh, Davis. Uh, if I have a source which is being reflected around a box before hitting a transmission surface property, such as ground glass, to be emitted, what effects does this have on the emitted irradiance? Um, well, on the every time it hits a surface, depending on what property is applied to that surface, it's going to have some effect on the um, on the light. For example, if the surface was 99% reflective, like an integrating sphere, um, let's just say everything else is perfect, it's just 99% reflective, every time the ray hits that surface, it's going to lose 1% of its current flux. So it's going to start out at 100, let's say it's 100 lumens, one ray, then the next, it hits the first surface, now it's down to 99, then it's going to be down to about um, 98, point, uh, 98 point something. So it's going to keep dropping down by 1% each time it's uh, it hits a surface. So whatever surface properties are applied will affect that ray before it then actually gets to the transmission surface. Thanks, Dave. Uh, we have another one from Dario. Where can I find properties for diffusers? Uh, well, we do have properties included in TracePro. We have properties for Luminate, Brightview, Covestro, and RPC Photonics. Uh, if it's not in our catalog, there's, there's really two options. Uh, one is to contact the manufacturer to see if they have BSDF data available. Uh, if they do, we're most likely going to be able to read it into one of the, the converter utilities in TracePro and be able to make a, a surface property based on that. Uh, if they do not have the data, then it really involves sending it out for a measurement. 
And if that's something you want to do, please let us know. We can uh, we can certainly forward you the, the names of some companies that can do BSDF type measurements. I've got another question here from Jan. Where do I usually uh, where do I usually get measured BRDF BSDF function data from? Uh, that's from either as I just mentioned. It's it's kind of a similar question. Um, a lot of times, you know, companies like Luminate, Brightview, and Covestro have the data on their website. Uh, a lot of times, it's going to be called BSDF, uh, or you could contact them to see if they have it available. Uh, and then as a last resort, you can send us, if you have a sample, you can send it out for measurement. And once again, let, let us know and we can, we can send you in some directions for companies to get things measured. In which case, uh, Jan asked another question, in which case is the BRDF, BSDF function asymmetric? Can you give an example? Um, well, for example, a piece of machined aluminum where it had some type of groove or grain structure on it. Uh, in something like that, you know, depending on the orientation of the sample, the scatter is going to be different. You know, if the grooves are running uh, parallel to the, the beam, it's going to scatter one way. If they're running it uh, orthogonal to the beam, it's going to scatter in a different way. Uh, contrast that to, say, like a piece of white paper, uh, copier paper, which is pretty much isotropic. You know, no matter how you rotate it, the scatter is going to be the same or similar. So really, you're, you're looking for, for asymmetric. You're looking a lot of times for grain or structure on the surface. I have a question here from Amir. Uh, using tabular data, various wavelength and instant angle, I wonder if Tracebook can interpolate a data point, for example, between wavelength 0.5 and 0.6. Uh, yes, Tracepro will interpolate between those values. So it'll do, I believe, it's a lin typically a linear interpolation between the values. Now I have a one here from uh, from uh, Mr. Davis again. In the surface source property, how does the scale function decide the maximum and minimum of the source? Uh, all the scale function does is increase or decrease the output of the source. Uh, for example, if we had a, an LED source that was defined in the property editor with the emission setting of 75 lumens, if I wanted to have higher output, I could say scale it by two. If I enter a scale factor of two, I now have 150 lumens on the output. If I said scale factor of 0.5, I now have 37 and a half lumens. So you can use it to adjust the output without having to go back and edit the property. I have a question from Vivek. Is it possible to create a surface source property not only with angular, but with spatial ray information? Um, not directly, no. The surface source property is uniform across a surface. What you really need to do in a case like that is use a ray file. With the ray file or a file source, you can define the XYZ starting position, the XYZ direction vector, and the flux value. Um, so that's the way you, you'd probably have to do that. Uh, I have a question here from uh, from Juan. Any recommendation for measuring or getting absorption coefficient values at a glass or transparent material? Um, you'd probably need to look at an optical lab that can do transmission, um, you know, the transmission measurements. Uh, in terms of getting the absorption coefficients, a lot of times if it's an optical glass, say like a shot or a corning or something like that, it'll probably be on the data sheet. Uh, the other method I've mentioned to people before is if you have access to like a spectrophotometer um, or a spectroradiometer and you can do transmission measurements, if you measure multiple thicknesses of a material, you can then work out what's the transmission loss due to the thickness. For example, if you measure a 5 millimeter thick sample and a 10 millimeter thick sample, assuming the surface finish and everything is the same on, on all samples. Now, because the difference in thickness is five millimeters between the five and 10 millimeter thickness, and you look at the transmission difference between the two, the transmission loss due to that five millimeter thickness difference is just the, the difference between those two. 
So if you have multiple thicknesses, take that measurement. You can then work out what the internal transmission is. We have a question here from um, a Dorian. If I increase the number of azimuth angles for a surface source, will this impact the ray tracing time? Yes, most likely. Um, the more information in a um, in a property, it just it takes longer for it to make the calculations and go through and do all that. But I think within a you know with reasonable amounts of of data, it's probably not going to have a noticeable effect. But if you probably put in azimuth values in every degree or every tenth of a degree for 360 degrees. Uh, my expectation is it would increase the ray trace time. Um, I have another question here from Jeffrey. Are there generic surface properties available for ABS plastic, powder coat, and anodized finishes for metals? Do not see them in the stock libraries. Um, unfortunately, no, uh, because there's we the the scatter is going to vary too much depending on how that surface is prepared. Uh, we do have scatter for some stock surfaces like Moldtec surfaces, but in terms of you know ABS plastic, how is the surface finished? Uh, if it's extruded, what's the surface finish on it? There's just I think at this point too many variables for us to really have a a good catalog of that type. Um, same with an anodized finish. You know the the actual scattering is going to depend quite a bit on what was done underneath the anodizing, what finish was applied to the aluminum. Uh, I've seen some you know, where they can be fairly rough, and I've also seen cases where it's been highly specular because they've put a nickel coating underneath the, the anodizing and then polished it and done some other things. So, so really, it's, there's too many variables there, I think, to be able to, act, you know, to offer an accurate catalog. Yes, there's quite a bit of, of difference in uh, the manufacturer's information on these properties. We do have some anodized aluminum uh, catalogs. There's the Alcoa, there's the Alanod, for instance. Uh, there's actually two different Alanod uh, coatings, so you can use those as a base to extrapolate from. Yeah. Uh, now, the interesting thing, Jeffrey, is you just asked another question. However, there are many paints like Coarse Brown. There is a paint catalog inside of the program and that has an extensive set of definitions per wavelength for the different surfaces that will then allow you to model the the paints that you might apply to a, a surface based on a generic uh, catalog that we used and, and pulled out of a, uh, a very nice uh, volume on color yeah I mean I, I would say too is if somebody knows of a stock catalog that we can get samples of we could probably look to get some measurements made Oh, definitely. You know, if, if somebody is, you know, I'm not, I haven't been involved in metal finishing in quite a while myself, but, you know, if there's something or if somebody can point us towards a uh, set of samples that, you know, represent some of these things, we could certainly look at getting some of that stuff measured. I think I have one final question that we should probably answer here. Uh, Vivek just asked, is it possible to estimate the scattering if the surface roughness is known? Uh, example for molded glass? Um Yes, if the surface roughness is on the order, you know, on a very small micro roughness, you know. So basically, we actually have a spreadsheet on our website, and it's in the support section called um, ABG from RMS. Uh, so that gives you a spreadsheet that you can work with, that knowing that RMS value uh, that you can get uh, an ABG model. Uh, but the, the thing you have to be careful of is when that scattering gets to be a larger um, larger size or those scattering surfaces that the RMS only tells you sort of it's a value. It doesn't tell you anything about the shape of the scattering surface. And you could have, you know, if you had a prismatic surface, it's going to scatter much differently than a sinusoidal surface that even though the two might have the same RMS value. So you need to need to do that um, an order of 200 microns that would probably work with the uh, sorry 200 nanometers uh, for a surface roughness that would probably work with that scatter from AB, uh, ABG from RMS so check on our website under the support section and I think it's in tools trace pro tools under support that there is a spreadsheet for ABG from RMS and if you don't find it just let one of us know and we can point you to it 
Uh, I think that pretty much wraps up uh, the questions on this. Is there anything else that uh, you want to chip in here at this time, Dave, and we can just close this up? I think that's about it that I have. Um, I mean, as, as mentioned, if we didn't get to all the questions, please feel free to send us an email here and we can help you out there. Uh, and I mentioned once again, we do we are recording this. So if you do want to hear um, or go back through this, we will have the recording of this available on our website probably tomorrow or Monday of next week at the latest, I would expect. Um, so it'll be the slides as well as the audio recording. Okay, I think with that, I think we should we can wrap this up. Um, Mike, thank you for moderating today. Uh, I'd like to thank all the audience for attending as well. Um, and with that, everybody, I hope everybody has a good day, and please look forward to our next webinar. Webinar. Unless Mike, do you have anything additional to add? No, I think we're done. Uh, thank you very much, Dave, and uh, let's let's wrap this one up. Okay, very good. Then uh, everyone have a good day and uh, talk to you soon. Bye.